คพอจากเมื่อวานเสียงแบบเป็นแปดสิบเปอร์เซ็นตละไม่รู้จะดังกันไหมด้วยนะเล่นเทินต่อไปเราจะเล่นตัวนี้ก่อน For the Queen Give me a time Curse you traitors God save the Queen
again and again and again. It's not too late to walk away. Army waste of time for one like me. Left, right, left, right. This could hurt. Getting to work. John. What do you want of me? For the Queen! มากี่สิบตัวมันก็ไม่ชนะกูหรอกอาจารย์ที่รู้ว่าเขาทำอยู่ again and again and again 
God save the Queen! I only loot corpses, except sometimes they're quite fresh. Off to the front yet again. Quiet, or the commissar will hear. Watch your heads! <laughs> ไม่พลาดทีบอีกแล้วมีฟโรดอนในสายลัสอินเดเวอร์อินทูเวิร์คอัลท์ดัสฟาร์อาสกาวต์สโคลทัวร์เฮอร์ฟรอมเฮอร์เรเวอริกยูกรีสยูมั
The scouts had learned a Nilfgaardian caravan with an armed escort had recently arrived in Mahta. The invaders had brought with them chests brimming with gold and jewels, then exchanged these for the finest Mahakaman forged swords and spears. A scout gave me one of the coins the black clads had used for payment. Upon the coin's back, the Lyrian Eagle. They pay with gold from my vault, the Queen said through gritted teeth. For arms that would cut down my fighting men and subjects. We might yet pursue and hunt them down, said Reynard, a spark in his eye. And make certain Ed Dahi never lays hands on those weapons. You might, I can, piped up Gabor, who had been listening to their exchange. But you might also recall, we Mahakamans are neutrals who assure all guests within our borders safety. True? Formally speaking, the Nilfgaardians have passed outside them. But attack him a stone's throw from our gates, and you'll see Bruder's rage come out his ears as steam, and out his arse as fire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No war's outcome has been swayed by a few wagons of arms, no matter their quality, said the Queen, vaulting into her saddle. Yet if we turn Bruver against us, I dare say we shall never wrest our land from black clad hands. The Queen's men regretted her reluctance to attack. But none tried to dissuade her. They knew her too well. Greetings. What is it? If anyone asks, you've not seen me. Hey. <laughs> Gonna need um, three buckets of nails and a tub full of pegs. Ok, 
damn, I... It's gonna be a right good levy, big and beautiful. Hey, I uh no. oh my god. Oh my god. It's gonna be a right good levy, big and beautiful. Greetings. What is it? If anyone asks, you've not seen me. Um, I found me. Okay, We shan't pass this way. Oh, brain it. Whatever would we do without you? Plummet off the cliff like lemmings, no doubt. You don't mind. My mom. My mom. The significant something. Ooh. Meave squinted and gazed off into the distance. It seemed to her that hundreds of black patches covered the peaks on the horizon. Once she had ridden up closer, she realized these were the windows of homes carved out of solid rock. Her pride this was, sighed Gabble. Burrows Rump. A city carved out of mountain rock. Hundreds of miles of tunnels, dozens of steelworks, smithies and forges. Now, it's a vast lair to monsters. They ooze from underground, weave their nests, hatch their young, and when hunger hits them in the gut, they prowl down into the pass. Meave stood at the entrance to the underground city. The monumental gate, cast in bronze, lay on the ground, folded multiple times as a scroll of paper. Out of blackened windows oozed a stench of rotting meat and mold. The queen bent an ear to hear water dripping, and, in the distance, a metallic scraping. A sound akin to chitinous scales rubbing against rock. The soldiers await your order, your grace, said Reynard quietly, as if he feared he would wake the beasts asleep in the caverns. 
Do you recall my words as we fled Lyria? Said me, turning to Reynard. You swore you would retake your crown, even if you had to penetrate hell to do so. Time to follow that oath. The queen inhaled deeply and stepped forward, her sword raised and prepared to strike or parry. Moments later, it was swinging, biting, as the current tenants of Boros Rump came out to meet her. Gnomes don't run so fast. You know, in case you're planning to skip out on the quick. <laughs> left, right, left, right. I'm a monster. You must sweat like a swine in that jacket. Ah, damn it! They're hatching! Place them into swarm with creepers! <laughs> to the last! Lyria! Again and again and again. Ah! Army's a waste of time for one like me. It's not too late to walk away. Give me a time. Mahjong. 
Pachang. Left, right. God save the Queen! I smell a leak. Again and again and again. the Shailmar, which lay writhing on the ground. She then ran her sword through its heart, finishing it. Yet so spent was she that she lacked the strength to pull her blade from between the plates of the chitinous armor. The beast near took me, she whispered. It was very close. The Lyrians reached a vast hall that had once served the clans as their meeting room. The stone benches were covered in sticky slime and insectoid eggs, while bats of varying size hung from the crystal chandeliers. Gascon rummaged through old, weathered bones, surely hoping to find something of value. Gabor, in turn, was at a shut and locked door, grappling with it as if it were a deadly beast. The door finally gave way with a sigh, and the dwarf raised his arms in a triumphant gesture. It's a storeroom! Should hold miners' tools aplenty, he said, enthused. Some barrels of alchemical brews in here, too. Lucky there's no sign of moisture. They haven't they soaked through. All we've got to do is roll them out into the corridor and set a bit of fire to them. And woof! We'll have sealed the beasts off from the pass once and for all. Meave treated the dwarves' instructions as hallowed. Soon after, the mountains trembled from a powerful explosion. Rubble came down and blocked the tunnels. They say the plumes of smoke escaping the window openings in the rock could be seen as far as Aldersburg.
คุยกับเฮ้ยเฮ้ยเฮ้คือเน้นปันให้เร็วDark clouds hovered over the horizon, and a strong gale snapped their banners. Damn it! A storm's coming. Gabor. Take us to the nearest settlement. We must seek shelter. Soon, the Lyrians arrived in Stulkamp. The town square proved full of folk. Several dozen dwarves, laden with large sacks and satchels, stood about in smaller groups. When a thick snow began to fall, the dwarves cheered. Tears streamed down the cheeks of several, but Meave could not tell if they issued from some fortuitous occurrence. Or if the strong wind had wrung moisture from their eyes. What is it we witness? Why do they rejoice at a snowstorm? Asked Meave, pulling her hood over her head. Well, the blizzards could cause to postpone their expedition by another day. Gabor responded. See, they've been conscripted by drawn lots to be settlers, found homes in a village in Blackbrook Vale. Seven expeditions have gone that way already, and none survived longer than a year. Valley's cursed. 
No two ways about it. Intrigued, Meave proceeded to speak with the settler's leader. He confirmed Gabor's claim. He had buried many a previous colonist. All had been abnormally thin, pale, prematurely greyed, as if some wraith had drawn the lifeblood out of them. Once the dwarf had finished his tale, he gripped the queen's hand firmly and, promising a generous reward, begged that she and her Lyrians accompany the expedition to Blackbrook Valley. Tain't far. Mere few leagues north along the main road. We'll make the march much easier if they came with the whole army, in case of any danger. I know not how useful our swords can be against curses and spectres, said Meave. But leave you bereft and in need I will not. We shall march with you into Blackbrook Vale and see to it that you are safely arrived. Then we will march on. The dwarf sped off to announce the good tidings to his settler brethren. By the time the blizzard had abated, they were ready to march. Be bold. Take on challenges, risks even. But before you set out to do anything, buy yourself some proper insurance. Always darkest for the dawn. Or when the last candle in the mine goes out. Waiting's painful. Forgetting's painful. But an arse dragged across cinders is the worst kind of suffering. Fall down seven times, get a bait. Then clobber the dunderhead who keeps shoving you. Waiting's painful. Forget. Be bold. It's a wee stranger every year. Scary to think where he'll be a hundred from now. Oh, I'd cut my beard, but I haven't yet received written permission. Stay clear of Bob. Give me a look down, why? A hung a wood begin and hello, so now. Me, but today I would mind. Yeah, long at a part achievement. Me, my dear, my own wound die. I'm sure I'm wrong with my own car. Win the word on which journey now. Okay, I'm done. ไปยังไม่ไปก็ได้แตนดาร์มาตันปะเถาปะเถาเ
God save the Queen! All right, that's no problem. Kratun. Curse you traitors. Army's a waste of time for one like me. Left, right, left, right. I only loot corpses, except sometimes they're quite fresh. We must trust each other. Watch your heads. <laughs> Army's a waste of time for one like me. For the Queen! Abolista, your command. I think you oh. really like this one. Tell me you jest. God save the Queen! Ha! 
for the last! ทำลายคุณจะทำลายเออโอเควันวิลล์ยูเอเวอร์เลิร์นชนะกูได้ยังไงล่ะเชิญครับทำเลยผมhad stopped and was removing packed ice from her mare's fetlocks when Gabor Zigrin approached. The dwarf squatted at the queen's side, glanced about quickly, then started speaking in a barely audible whisper. Your Majesty, I overheard some folk talking in the smithy. Birdies claim there's treasure, true riches, in the hills near Blackbrook Vale, south of here. Stowed away there. And nobody dares go looking for it on account of beasts that have made their layers there. You've got a wee army behind you. I reckon you could try. Might be worth the risk, eh? The queen brushed the snow from her knees, and raising her hand against the glaring sunlight, peered towards the mountains. 
Though tempted, she had doubts. To start, the rocky scree at their feet warned clearly of avalanches. I shall think on it, she answered, before vaulting into her saddle. My brute veil holds many secrets and many treasures. Discover your head in the moons. Ah, <laughs> unforgiving winters. Discover your head. Oh, that's all there. Oh,
โอ้โหนะขาดลอยอ impossible I can't believe it Gascon he he drank a dwarf under the table I've said it before I think dear Raynard you simply underestimate him เคเคียหมดไม่มีคุยแน่เลยเคจบแค่นี้ก่อนเดี๋ยวจะยาวออกเกมไปอัปโหลดก่อน